You know that urban air mobility is really becoming big business when organizations like NASA get involved. Now I'm here now with Bob Pierce, who's the Deputy Associate Administrator for Aeronautics in NASA. Bob, welcome to the program. Thank you. Tell us, why is NASA getting involved in something like UAM? So NASA Aeronautics is an organization that has a mission to solve the problems of flight, to capture the opportunities, and so UAM is a huge opportunity for aviation to provide public benefits, create a new form of transportation for the traveling public. So do you see that there'll be more, perhaps, trust in the idea of urban air mobility when it's organizations like NASA that are talking about it rather than disruptors? Well, you know, I think it takes both, right? It's going to take the regulators like the FAA in the U.S., it's going to take innovators like NASA, and it's going to take the, the, the entrepreneurial community to create the vehicles and to create the systems and so forth. So it's all of us working together that I think create the credibility and to create the infrastructure and the systems that will well, that'll form the urban air mobility system. One of the big issues, I think, is scalability. Um, in order to make it affordable, you've got to get a lot of them. Do you think that's going to work and how can NASA help in that? Yeah, so the biggest issue, right, so we have manufacturers that know how to build vehicles, can build a lot of vehicles. That, that will be a challenge because it will have to be at a scale greater than what, you know, say an Airbus or Boeing builds at today, more like an auto manufacturer, but it's got to be done at aviation, you know, um, grade you know, manufacturing quality and so forth. So that's a, a somewhat of a problem, but I think the bigger one is making sure that you can get the level of operations, the number of operations that allow it to become an affordable system. And that means having the airspace, the air traffic management technologies that allow safe operations in and around urban areas. So that's a very challenging problem. And that's one that NASA is really focused on in working with the FAA and working with others to enable those kinds of high volume, very safe, very dense operations. Do you see that as being a way of it not just becoming something for the rich, as perhaps helicopter operations are now. Yeah, no, that's absolutely correct. So they've got to get the, the volume of the manufacturing to bring the cost of the vehicle down, but then you've got to get the volume of operations to also get their turn times and to get the, you know, the use out of those vehicles that allow the cost to come down. So it's absolutely the el essential element of bringing the cost down and making this an affordable transportation option for all of us. And can I ask, when do you expect us to be able to, to use these systems? So we've worked pretty hard with our industry partners to lay out what we believe is a, an aggressive but doable roadmap. And that puts us at around 2028, 20, um, where you could see the kind of the first level of scalable operations that would bring this kind of tra transportation option to the public. Bob, thank you very much. You're welcome.